there are 40 million remote workers in the U.S. alone, and we expect about half of them to move in the next couple years. You know, we're excited, and the thing that's been so great about this is we've had new citizens move in, and these new citizens are already adding so much to our community, not only to our economy, but just to our way of life. We can offer you know, families and young families that opportunity to have a safe, affordable place for their kids to be a part of a community. The pandemic created an opportunity. Why? Because people started realizing, both companies and, and talent started realizing, well, this remote work thing isn't bad. It works. In 2020, the COVID pandemic changed how millions of Americans did their jobs. Lockdowns forced many people to work from their homes and ushered in a brand new era where remote work is commonplace. And for rural communities around the country, this revolutionary change created a golden opportunity. We're at a real inflection point here that was catalyzed by the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. And a lot of places in rural America are already benefiting, and we would be very excited to see that expand. Laszlo Kolsar is a professor of rural sociology and demography at Penn State University. When people start to get used to the idea that they can work from home, then it comes the realization that, well, that home could be anywhere. I may want to live in a place that is less dense than the previous one. I may want to live in a place that is closer to outdoor opportunities. If there's a shutdown, then I could at least go out and, and get some exercise. Or I may want to live in a place where the government is less intrusive to what I can and cannot do during the pandemic. And now this virtual commuting made it possible for people to move to places where they could not have been before. Evan Hawk is the co-founder and chief operating officer for Make My Move, a company that connects remote workers with rural communities that are trying to attract new residents. Big cities are great, whether you're talking about New York or San Francisco or, or Denver, you know, they're, they're in no risk of going away. But for a lot of people, it, they're unlivable. They're crowded, they feel unsafe, they're way too expensive. Now that people can choose where they live and, and work, many of the folks that value things like connection to community and affordability are finding that in smaller towns and often rural places. The urban exodus from large cities to more rural areas has been the subject of national headlines. Many of the nation's largest cities have seen steady population losses in the years since the pandemic. So where are these people going? Obviously, a few data points don't make a long-term trend. However, uh, we have been watching with great interest the accumulation of data points about where people have been moving inside the country. And people have been moving out of densely populated urban areas into rural parts of the country. And what more can we say? Well, they're not moving on an evenly distributed basis. There are a bunch of communities that we have identified, particularly in the south and eastern parts of the United States and the Rocky Mountain West are some particular points. Very few in the Northeast or in the Midwest, for example. So there are places individually and specifically that people are going in big numbers. And there are other places where they are not going. The interesting question becomes, well, what are the attributes of those places that people are going to? Because they're going there obviously for voluntary reasons. They've decided that this location is better than all the other potential places that they could go. Natchez, Mississippi is located on a bluff above the Mississippi River. They were one of the first rural communities to launch a campaign to attract remote workers. They called the campaign Shift South. Shift South really began right after the COVID-19 pandemic was at its worst in the fall of 2020. And at that time, we only knew of two other cities doing this. Uh, one was Savannah and uh, the other was Oklahoma City. And uh, we thought, well, if they're doing this with great success, well, why can't Natchez? And so we thought, well, let's just give them a real incentive to come here and check this out. And so we launched our Shift South campaign. We opened this up at a limited number of slots, what we felt we could afford, assigning a $6,100 incentive per person. We thought, well, it will take anywhere from 14 to 18 months 
to recoup that because our studies indicated that these remote workers are affluent workers. They're making on average anywhere from 90 to 100,000 a year as they reinvest in our community, purchasing real estate and buying their merchandise and groceries at our local stores. All of that generates multiple times in our community and it comes back. And to date, we know that we've had 22 workers move in, 20 of those with spouses, so that's added 42 new people right here in our town. You know, when you consider our Shift South campaign and its success, it, you're almost tempted not to talk about it too much because you don't want to invite competition from other communities, but really as a service to other small towns and cities, I have to say, if you're not considering this, you're really missing out. Greensburg, Indiana is another rural town who has benefited from a social marketing campaign to attract remote workers. Greensburg, Indiana is a town of about 13,000 people located in Decatur County, which is halfway between Indianapolis and Cincinnati, Ohio on I-74. I was elected in early 2020 as the youngest mayor in the state of Indiana, and I wanted to tackle this attraction and recruitment novice idea that you would incentivize people to live in a place that they weren't from. And so we launched into that right in the middle of COVID when everyone was looking for remote work or had remote jobs. So we launched uh, this idea that we would try to attract five new families to Greensburg and Decatur County through an incentive that includes a cash for relocation. And we've had over 2,200 people apply to be a part of our community to fill those five spots. And we're actually launching into the next phase of attracting another 11 families this year. We've had a wide breadth of people who have applied and, and been interviewed for our program. We have um, some folks who are empty nesters, who are looking for a different community to call home, have a remote base job. We've got families with young kids who are looking for our great schools, a safe community that's affordable to live in. We've got uh, people who are wanting to start families. We've got single individuals who are just looking for a different place in the country to call home. Remote workers are also moving to Bemidji, Minnesota. Bemidji has a population of just over 16,000. They designed a marketing campaign called 218 Relocate to attract remote workers to their community. Well, the 218 Relocate program was started in part because of almost like a, the perfect storm of thing, events that have happened. One is the pandemic. The pandemic created an opportunity. Why? Because both companies and talent started realizing, well, this remote work thing isn't bad. It works. And so there's more opportunity in that regard. Then all of a sudden we get information from PC Magazine that we're in the top 10 in North America, best places to remote work from. So that's another piece to the puzzle. And the third one though is, and, and just the whole issue of quality of life and frankly crime uh, and concerns around safety in major metro areas has opened the door to rural communities to say, why not consider here? Why not consider our community? All total, we believe it's about 250 community members have moved here and taken advantage of what 218 Relocate offers them as they come to our community. But the opportunities now to grow as a regional center and become more than just a vacation spot has really emerged because of the, the broadband that's been developed here and the opportunities that came from that. Paul Bunyan Communications is the broadband provider in Bemidji, Minnesota. Over the last 20 years, they've built a powerful system capable of multi-gigabyte service to the entire Bemidji area. It's a critical part of their success in attracting remote workers. And I've been here 34 years, and uh, now a good chunk of that, at least since 1999, has been about broadband. You can just see how critical that is. And now as we're talking about remote workers, you can't have that without effective broadband. You, you can't do it on aging infrastructure. You can't do it on pretty good service. If you're gonna have it for your job, it's gotta be good broadband. It's gotta be serving your needs completely, right? Not just okay. It takes a good network to do that, that level of connectivity. And so that is critical. Without that, don't talk about this opportunity for remote work. You have to have broadband. Robust broadband access is arguably the most important asset a small town needs to attract remote workers and drive growth. So there has been a lot of talk about rural broadband in the past, you know, five, ten years. But I would say that up until the pandemic, that was a theoretical conversation of, yeah, we can do it when we'll have money and it's really good to have, but it's not a priority. 
for most places. The pandemic has changed that discourse quite a bit. And now this is the top priority for everyone because remote work or even hybrid work cannot exist without those kinds of technological capabilities. If you think about remote workers, they, they, they can live anywhere, but they need to be connected to life and their uh, employer. And so while they come to rural communities and small towns looking for space and affordability, they need that internet connection to make it work. We are a broadband ready community and our city services and private providers do provide a great backbone for that. Rural America is, you know, interested in and struggling and building out the network to support that. And I think there's a lot of work to be done, but it is very, very important. You need to make your community an attractant to people who are used to living, for example, in an urban environment that has lots of things available. What might those things be? Well, one of them would be education. Great educational opportunities for yourself and your family and your children. Another one would be great healthcare opportunities. Housing stock. People are not gonna wanna live somewhere if they can't find a nice place and a good home to put themselves and their family. Another one would be uh, responsive and responsible local government who's able and willing to do the kinds of things that are required to make for a dynamic, growing, vibrant community. Those are all uh, necessary and important. But the last one I would I'd mention, you know, if you're going to bring in a lot of outside people, you've got to be able and willing to accept outsiders, people who are not from your community. They may be different than you. And you've got to be able and willing to flexibly bring those people in and uh, add them to the dynamic uh, growth story and, and harmonious community that you're trying to build. It is fantastic to see the impact these remote workers are having. You can see the, their effect on our community. There's an energy here. When your town is growing and you have the new breweries starting up and you have these businesses that are happening that haven't always been here, there's an excitement and there's an energy in our community. And we're trying to attract remote workers that have a higher income than our average. So that brings in more disposable income, which allows them to donate to nonprofits, support the arts and culture, spend money in the community, um, eat at restaurants, the things that really have a residual effect that are kind of non-quantifiable. Our realtors estimate that our population has grown anywhere by 1,000 to 1,500 people. We're definitely moving in the right direction. And we're now seeing an interest in renovating historic properties downtown and having more and more residents move downtown. Certainly, it, you add up the new homes being built or and or purchased, the impact on taxes, the impact on food and beverage sales, all those different things, it's pretty significant. Finally, and perhaps the best news of all, remote work does not seem to be a fad or short-term phenomenon. This is a trend that was accelerated by the pandemic, but also one that has many potential benefits for employees, employers, and rural America. Well, certainly remote work is here to stay. You know, we see a uh, majority of workers would rather leave their job than go back to the office at, at full time. I think this is a long-term trend. So when you start thinking about like, how many people would be moving to rural areas over the next decade or so, there might be at least 100, 150,000 people each year who are actively thinking about moving to some place and they're looking for the right destination. I've seen enough evidence over the last couple of years to feel that this is a long-term structural trend. I'm deeply optimistic about this because I think this creates the opportunity set for rural parts of the country to reverse the long-term trends of relative and absolute population decline and the other attributes that go along with that. So I think it's a great opportunity set for communities that are able and willing to position themselves for success in the future.